God called us and God called us to be his children because he loves us, right? Well, when he, he calls us and he has what he wants us to do, he wants us to be that last week we was taught, we talked about being a servant, being a servant of God, and how important that is to be a servant. We need we can walk out of the light and the busyness and the hecticness of life and, and offenses and all that sort of thing. One way to one way to, to help us deal with life is become a servant of God. Become a servant of God. When we, when we enter into that servanthood of God and we're truly sold out for the things of God, let me tell you something. There's a lot of stuff in our life that the enemy can't lay on us anymore. He can't lay on it. He won't stick like throwing mud against the wall. Right? Uh, I said it last week. I said, you know, you want, you want to enter into a battle? Go sit in your house all day. Go sit in your house for a couple of weeks. Watch what happens to you. You'll start climbing the walls. Why? <laughs> Think about it. Well, why, why is it? Because the enemy come to kill, steal, and destroy. And he knows when you're isolated, and he knows how to get in your head. And all of a sudden, you're fighting battles that you, that, that you were in conversations about two weeks ago. You're, you're rehearsing all this stuff that, that happened to you a couple weeks ago because, you, because he has you captive. Unless you're spending time in the Word of God, Unless you're listening to worship music, unless you're unless you're saturating yourself with with the presence of God, that's what He wants from us. So this week, talking about the kingdom, it says, uh, "For He ser- for for He who serves in these things is acceptable." I don't know if you read that. Romans fourteen seventeen. So the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. For he who serves in these things is acceptable in God and approved of men. Therefore, let us pursue these things, which make for peace, and things by which one may be that may edify one another. What will you do for your peace? What do you do for your peace? Everybody wants peace. Everybody wants peace. People spend a lot of money for peace. And it's unattainable. Why? Because it only comes from the Prince of Peace. Amen. The only place that peace truly comes from, true peace, is through the Prince of Peace. Amen. This scripture that I'm talking about here, there was a dispute. And what this was talking about, I didn't just for a lack of time, uh, I'm just going to tell you the kind of the, the leading into John in Romans 14, 17. Romans 14, 17, there were people eating. And they were being offended by, by this group was, was eating what was unlawful for the Jews to eat. And the Apostle Paul was laying, laying down the, the, the order of things. And he was telling us, telling them disciples, he said, listen, the, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is way more than eating and drinking. But if eating and drinking offends you, whatever I'm eating, I'm not going to eat it anymore. You understand, our life is, we're bought with the Christ. Our life is dead and hid in Christ. We're no longer on our own. That's what the scripture says. So if we're no longer on our own, my, my mindset has to be on the, on, on the weaker vessel. My mindset has to be, my heart has to be after the weaker Christian that, I, that no matter what I do, I don't def- uh, offend them. I want to bring them in. I want to bring them into the kingdom. I don't want to push them away with my using my liberty as an occasion to sin. I don't want to, because I got free, and God set me free from those, those eating restrictions of, of the law, how the law had, how, you know, had all these eating restrictions. I'm set free from them. But wait a minute, what about the young Jews that are sitting there eating that are still in this mindset? They're, they're being offended by what was going on. That's really what I was talking about. So he's establishing what the kingdom looks like. The kingdom looks like we die to ourselves. We died on that cross when Jesus Christ said, take up your cross and follow him daily. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We die, we have to die to ourselves. It's no longer I live, but Christ lives in it. Galatians 2 20. I am crucified with Christ, he says. So when a crucified person doesn't look for his own rights anymore, I'm looking for the needs of the other people. I'm taking care of the needs of the other people. I'm not so fixated on me and my own and what I got to do and everything going on with me. 
I'm more concerned about people coming into the kingdom. That's why the Apostle Paul says, if eating meat offends somebody, I'll never eat meat again. Because it's not about me. It's not about you. It's about the kingdom that's being established right here. You know, the United States was established by godly men. Amen. Led by God, no question about it. They had to have a set of rules, the Constitution of the United States. They had to put that, that structure in place so people would abide by it, to protect the freedoms, to protect our, 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 our rights that were written in that Constitution. And we're a couple hundred years old, and we see that those rights are being shipped away. Those, those rights are being shipped away by evil men who come to, who are being led by the enemy. Because when I say being led by the enemy, because he's the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the, in the children of disobedience. So the bottom line is, if we're not in Christ, we're, we're, we're walking with the enemy. We're taking heed from what the enemy's saying. We all have the capacity to do that. That's why it says casting down every imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of the truth. Don't listen to the enemy. If that, if that lie comes in, cast it down immediately. So, so listen, when I was in the world, unsaved in the world, I had no idea I was being led by the enemy. So those that are sitting in government right now that are not saved, who do you think is leading them? Who do you, where do you think they get their ideas from? I'm not saying that they're, that they're a witchcraft. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is that they're dealing with what they, what they have. So it's real easy to, when the situation comes in, we're going to take that law. We're going to take this law. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna put this amendment in there. We're going we're gonna to change this. And it's all to kill, steal, and to destroy. That's the whole purpose of it. Because if the enemy is behind these guys, he got one goal. That's to destroy us. He's to take what God built and established, no different than the church. No different than the church. The enemy wants to kill us, don't to destroy us. So what's he do? Brings division in the church. How's he destroy a country? He brings division in the country. He brings division in the country. People start making rules and making laws and all this stuff. And next thing you know, our, our rights are being just diminished right before our eyes. That's why it's so important to for us to vote when it's time to vote. Listen, other people in other countries would love to have the right to vote. Here we are in the United States of America, and I hear a lot of people say, I ain't even voting. My vote don't matter. It does vote. Because listen, you and I are going to stand before the Almighty God one day. And the vote that we make, we're going to have to give an answer for. Amen. If everything we say is going to be, we're going to give an answer for what we say, everything we do, who we vote for. Well, why I voted for him, why did you vote for him? Well, he, he, he's this, 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 and this. But what about my kingdom? Yeah. What about my kingdom? Is that person you're voting for, do they have any kingdom mindset? But see, we don't look at that stuff. We don't, we don't follow that, that mindset as children of God. We need to, and that's part of the reason that I want you, uh, that we're talking about the kingdom today, because if you really do got to understand that we're not of this world, we've been bought with the Christ, right? We're pilgrims and sojourners passing through this lifetime, passing through our existence as United States citizens, and then praise God we are. And I, we, we say pledge allegiance to the flag. You know what I mean? We, we do. We're, we're Americans, and we're proud of our country that we're born in. But my main country, but my main existence as a child of God is to serve the kingdom of God. Amen. And it's to fulfill, first and foremost, the, king, the kingdom principles. That's right. yeah. and, I'm, and that's what we're talking about today. That's what Paul was talking about in John 14. The conditions to enter it, enter into this kingdom. You know, the United States, all of our forefathers came from other countries. We come into Ellis Island, most of us most come into Ellis Island. We had to meet the criteria to become United States citizens. They had to, okay? But, there, but if, if you didn't meet the qualifications, that, what did they do? They sent you back to the country you're from. Yep. So there was, a, there was a critique that they had. There was a set of rules. 
you weren't going to bring disease into the country. If you were if you were a felon and you were a criminal, they were not going to let you into the country. If you were a criminal, they could not let you in. Why? Because you've got a bunch of criminals into the country. What are you going to have? You have more criminals. Right. That simple. Not, not discriminating against people. It's really not. It's protecting what you have. I read a book. I read a book a while back. It was called Pigs in the Party. Yeah. Yeah. You know the book Pigs in the Party was about yeah. about the demonic activity that goes on. Yeah. The demonic activity that goes on, and the point of it is, if there were pigs in your house, you would not be nice to them pigs. Yeah. <laughs> you would not be nice to them pigs. You'd be hitting with everything you possibly could to get them out of your house, right? Why? Because that's your house. Amen. And you like your house a specific way. It would not be discriminating against those pigs if you did things to get them out of the house. No, you have every right because that's your house. Amen. So by keeping people, by keeping people that, that are going to bring harm to a country, keeping them out is a good thing. It's a good thing. It's something to think about. So the condition, we look in John 3, 5. This is talking about Nicodemus. Jesus answered, which is true by saying that unless one is born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, that which is born of the spirit is spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. That's the qualification. So what is being born again? We understand what being born again is. It says if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you shall be saved. Yes. That's the qualification. You've got to believe in your heart and you've got to confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. And when you do that, when I do that, and I did that, I become a blood bought child of God. That means that I, the cross, the blood that was shed on that cross was shed for me because I received it. We received Jesus Christ into our heart to be our Lord and Savior. That's the only qualification of being coming in. And let me tell you something, that's doing the work of evangelism. That's bringing people into the kingdom, bringing, bringing them in. They gotta be prepared. Matthew 22, one through 14. And like I said, I'm not gonna read through the whole thing. It says the, the parable of the wedding banquet. You want to when you got your Bible, and look through it as I'm talking about it. So those who were invited were not worthy to attend because they were busy. They had all kinds of stuff going on in their life. They were distracted. They did they just showed very little interest. You ever talk to somebody about the Lord? I only had me say it like this. Have you ever talked to a Christian? Have you ever talked to a Christian? They really didn't want nothing to do with the Lord. I have. They they proclaim to be Christian. But don't talk to them really about the Lord because they don't want to talk. They don't want to really that, that's that's, that's for Sunday morning. That's for Sunday morning. These are like the people that, that Jesus is talking about the Jewish people here. He's talking about this in the light of the Jewish people. They were invited to the feast. We, everyone was invited to the feast. Many are called, but few were chosen. All of us are called. Everybody on the whole face of the earth is called to be the children of God. But not everybody accepted the call on their life. Not, not everyone accepts it. Not, there's a lot of people, and then there's people that do it because they're trying to punch a ticket out of hell for going to hell, where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of feet. They're trying to punch a ticket out to get out of hell, but they don't want to live for the kingdom. They don't want to live for the king. They're doing their own thing. Listen, I, I, I do what I do. I got a relationship with God. You ever heard that? I got a relationship with God between him and I. Yeah. It says between him and I. He knows my heart. You better believe it, he knows your heart. And Jeremiah said, the heart of man is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. And when we start moving away from the word of God, when you and I start take, taking us apart from the word of God, now we're dismantling our, 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 our relationship with the king. Your children are your children. No matter what they do, they're still going to be your children. They can't stop being your children. And when they're your children, they're born. They're, they're born. Born. I had two, two daughters. They were born of us. 
So the point that I'm making here is this. When they become adults, they can walk away. No, no question about it. They can walk away from us. But they'll always be our children. They will always be our children. They don't have to listen to us when they get older. Most of the time they don't. <laughs> So he's talking in, in, uh, in Matthew, the 22, 1 through 14. They were not worthy because they didn't accept the invitation. Servants were sent out to gather everyone, both good and bad, to the wedding banquet, and it was now full. You see, I like that part where he said they ate right and took them back. So it wasn't just the people that we would see, well, I want them in, I want this person to come in, I want that person to come in, both good and bad. He could listen. The hospital was full of sick people. And a lot of well people that are being treated like they say. But that's what the hospital was for, for sick people. The yeah. kingdom is for broken people to come yeah. in and be healed. Yes. Right? That's what the kingdom is for, to redeem us. We were all broken. Right? We all fall short of the glory of God. Right. We all were sinners. We all come in as sinners. So in our own way, we were all broken separated from God. Right. But praise God, somebody invited us. Somebody, somebody invited us to a place where they could hear the gospel being preached and where we could be redeemed. He, could, he just picked us up and he dusted us off and he gave us a new heart. That's what Ezekiel said. Not the dust of us off, but he gave us a new heart. Right. And he put a heart of flesh in us. In other words, we become sensitive to the things of God. Look out a heart of stone. The world gives you a heart of stone. There means somebody in the world, they're rock, they're, their heart is rock hard. They're, but it's all it's like impenetrable. You just, you talk to them and you can just pick up that you detect that hardness that's in them. God deals with that heart. When the king entered, he saw he saw who was, who was not dressed for the wedding. Now this story, I should have started off correctly. A king was making a feast for his son. The king was setting up a wedding feast for his son. That was what this banquet was really for, setting up a wedding banquet. So when the king entered in, as soon as, as soon as he was, he seen one that was not dressed for the wedding. He told his servants to tie him up, cast them in outer darkness, where there's weeping and wailing, weeping and gnashing of teeth. He was not dressed for the garment. For the people to come in, those are like the people that come into the church. They don't want nothing to do with God. They're here working another angle. Think about that. I, I've seen it. I've seen it happen. Uh, we used to go to a big church up in Greensburg. And when a new business would move into town, where do you think they went? Where is a thousand people every Sunday? Right. Uh, they would go to politicians running for office. Where do you think he ended up? Yeah. He ended up in church. Uh, Why? Because you have a mass group of people right. in one place at one time. Where you can talk, talk to people, shake hands, you can do a whole lot of politics. Not everybody that comes in the church. That's right. Is in the in, in for the wedding banquet. Uh -huh. Not everyone, not everybody that does. Scripture says you'll know them by their fruits. Right. You'll know them by their fruits. Not what they say. Right. Right. Not what they say. What they do. By how they talk, what they do, what's going on in their life. That's how you look. And don't, don't get me wrong, we're not fruit testing. We're, we, we can't be fruit testing. <laughs> that, I mean, we 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 were and I were raised up in Teen Challenge, and you had all the fruit testing. You had staff members that literally were fruit testers. They would antagonize people to see what was in it. Uh -huh. That's what I'm talking about. They would agitate people to see what that all was in right. well, Listen, you just brought me over to anger. Right, right. <laughs> What do you expect is going to happen? Let me do it to you. The old pastor of mine used to say, we're going to stick and poke you around. Right. Play a possum. You know? Play a possum. Get the stick, stick poke around. And you'll come back to the old man. The old man will still, still live in there. So. But that guy that was dressed, that he didn't have the money feast. He wasn't, what, was the, what was the dress that he was required? Isaiah 61, 10. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. 
For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments, as the bride adorns himself with the jewels. So what's he talking about? He's talking about Jesus is all righteousness. You've got to put on Jesus Christ. And our righteousness is in Christ and Christ alone. And that's what we're clothed in, the robes of righteousness. That's what the robes of righteousness mean. We're being clothed in a robe. We're clothed in Christ's righteousness. That's where he said at the end of that, end of that uh, thing. It says, for many are called, but few were chosen. Matthew 25, 1 through 13, the parable of the ten virgins. Now, the ten virgins, may have heard about that parable before. You got five wise and five foolish. I'm not going to read it, so I'm just going to talk through it. You got the five wise and the five foolish. They were waiting, waiting for the wedding feast. They were waiting, waiting for the wedding feast. But all these parables, they started out with the kingdom of, the kingdom of heaven and life. Okay? So it tells you you've got people in the church, you've got the wise and you've got the foolish. Okay? What makes the wise, what makes one wise, what makes one foolish? This story here talks about the uh, they had their oils, they had their lamps. They were they had oil. The, the, wise, the wise ones, they had enough oil to last. The other ones didn't. What's that what's that oil represent? The Holy Spirit. It talks about the Holy Spirit. So when the bride was waiting, he didn't come because he didn't get called by the father. He didn't get called to go get the bride. Time went on, so the last room got there and him. When the bridegroom called, and those who were in the house, the ten that were in the house, they lit up their lamps. Well, the five that weren't prepared, the five that weren't prepared, they didn't have enough oil in their hands. So listen, this is a long journey that we're on. Right? This is the long, this is the splash in the pan that we're doing. The journey that we're on is a lifetime. It's eternal. We have to have a, we have to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. We have to have a relationship with God. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of fire. We need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. That's, that's imperative as a child of God. We have to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. We need to be endued with God. Jesus told his disciples, listen to this, when Jesus told his disciples, don't leave Jerusalem until you've been endued with power. Listen, you want to be endued, you want to be endued with power. When Jesus told his disciples, and we are his disciples, we are his children, he's telling you and I, don't leave don't set out on your journey until you've been endued with power. Right. We need to be filled with being baptized with the Holy yes. Spirit. That's where the power of witness to build the kingdom comes from. Remember me saying the Holy Spirit is in you and I building the kingdom right. as we speak. As we're sitting here right now, all over the world the kingdom is multiplying. The kingdom is getting bigger and bigger. Why? Because there's people that are, that are ministering the gospel. There's people that were invited to church. That they got, they got a chance to hear the gospel being preached. They asked Jesus Christ to come into their hearts and be their Lord and Savior. They were never the same. Their lives were completely transformed at that moment. They were never the same. Now they were beginning to be disciples. And because they were being disciples, they were learning kingdom principles on how to go back out themselves and build a kingdom. You understand, when, I'm, when I get excited because God did something in my life, and I'm going to tell somebody about it. Look at the woman at the well. They probably, you know, everybody trying to laugh at her because she had so many husbands. Ridicule her for that. She's probably a joke in that time. But what happened when she met Jesus? She ran right back to those people. You see the difference between taking an offense and having the Spirit of God in you? That offense went away because the power of God was greater than his offense. She went in and told them what happened. She went back into that town, told them what happened. And what happened? The whole city come out to meet Jesus. The whole city come back out to meet Jesus. So they got saved. Not based on what she said, based on what he said. So you understand what I'm saying? You don't even have to know the gospel. Invite somebody in. Right. Invite them in. Bring them in. You may not have the, you may not have the, 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 the maturity or whatever to evangelize that. Invite them to church. That's all it takes. 
That's all it takes. Bring them in to where the gospel is being preached. And where the gospel is being preached, the Holy Spirit is there. And the Holy Spirit knows, knows what people now need. That's right. The Holy Spirit is building the church. He's the master builder. Right. You don't think he knows the people that you're bringing in? He's been drawing them. And he probably laid on your heart to invite them in. You're the tool that he used. So the ones who didn't have enough oil, they said, hey, give us some of your oil. They said, no. If I give you some of my oil, listen, God gives us a portion. God gives us enough. You can't live off my oil. You can't live off my car. I can encourage you with it. But you can't live it. You've got to get it yourself. He's a personal God. And he wants to fill each and every one of us as individuals. He wants to do a work in each and every one of us as individuals. You need to seek him for yourself. Lewis used the, the thing about knocking. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. You ever notice that door on that picture? It's a good picture. There's no handle. He couldn't come in. Only the person on the inside could open it up. Only you and I can open it up. We're the only one that can receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. I can't, I'd like to do it for other people. I'd rather for everybody I know. Wouldn't you? You'd give up and just say, hey, I'm going to receive Jesus for you. You're going to be filled with the man. How, how beautiful that would be. But no. God knows how to deal with the heart of the person. I think we're going to stop there. I think we'll stop right there. We'll finish this next week. But I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you here today. I want to encourage you because, listen, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, is right here, right in our midst. Read your parables. Read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Take heed. Read, read the Beatitudes. Everything that has kingdom in it, read it. Because that's the foundation that the church is being built upon is the kingdom of God. It's right here, right now. Every believer who has a relationship with Jesus Christ, you are a part of the kingdom. We are all part of the kingdom. But very little people know what it is. You understand that? Very little, very few people in the church. To them, it's just coming to church. I just come to church. I'm, I'm just going to go there on Sunday. I'm going to worship for a while. Good fellowship. Praise God. See friends out and see the walk. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. But I want you to know and understand what you're coming for. You're coming here to learn about the kingdom. So you can take the kingdom for what you learned here and take it out there. If I would have done a walk through with, with the business owner that I could have gone on doing, I could have never built anything for them. I would have been dead. I was standing in the middle of that place looking at what you want me to do. We'll just do something. That's, that sounds crazy, right? But we get like that with Christianity. We, we're, we're walking like that with Christianity. Well, go, go evangelize. What's that? What do you want me to do? What, what's that look like? What, what, do you, what do you mean? Go evangelize. Go tell them what Jesus did to you at the moment of the Go tell them what Jesus did to you. That's all you have to do. Tell them the good that God's doing in your heart right now. How he changed you, how he transformed you, how he how he did a new work in you, how he healed you from, from cancer or, or whatever the case. Dutch was healed from cancer, and, he, and he's always out telling people about Jesus. You know? Why? Because he's got a story. There's other people here. Ed's an evangelist. Johnny's an evangelist. I mean, and there's other people in here. Lewis is an evangelist. There's people in here that are out actively ministering the gospel. And you know what they're doing? They're just making friends with people. Talking to people. And we have a beautiful opportunity. We have a beautiful opportunity to be here today. And those of you who, if those, and I believe everybody in here is saved, I'm going to give an invitation anyway. Those of you who have never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'm going to give you an invitation to come up with the set of this right now. He said, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, that Jesus Christ is Lord, you shall be saved. He said, if you repent 
He said, except you repent, you shall likewise perish. There's got to be a changing of the heart. There's got to be a changing of the heart. You've got to, be, you've got to see the need to be saved. There's people, that's, I've seen old, old, older people that were older Christians that happened not to be saved. They were, they talked to talk. They were around enough that they knew the lingo. They knew, they knew, knew how to communicate. But they had no relationship with God. I was doing work for a lady, and I said, what's your testimony? I said, tell me your testimony. She got Kayla playing on the radio, you know. I said, what's your testimony? She looked at me like, what are you talking about? I said, your testimony, your conversion, God. He's like, uh. She was honest enough. She was honest enough to do that, to say that. So there's people that you'll look at and say, hey, they're, they're Christians because this, they do this, they do that. They talk this, they talk that. You never know. You never know who's who. Ask them to pray. And, 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 I, and I'm the big one is because, listen, God created us to be, God saved us to be kingdom builders. We're to take what we know and go build the kingdom, to add to that kingdom. And this is how we do it. We just tell people about the love of Jesus, about how God touched our heart, what God did in our life. That's, that's the easiest way to do it. All you have to do, listen, you don't have to know the kind of scriptures to do it. You really don't. Good to know some scriptures. You've got to know a couple. Romans Road is a beautiful, a beautiful, there's about four or five scriptures in the Romans Road. It's the Romans Road to Salvation. It's all in the book of Romans. And that's a fantastic little track that you can have. That you can talk to somebody and just say, look, this is what it says. This is what it says. This is what it says. You only have to memorize it. You can be pointing out on a paper, look, this is what it says. This is we're all sinners. We were all sinners. Right? We all come to the saving, we all have to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. You know, that's, the, that's how you do it, just be bold. And I found out one thing about God in my, in my walk. I've been walking with God for about 25 years now. I think it's about 25 years. And I've noticed this about him. When you step out, there's provision when you step out. When you step into it, you don't feel like you have That's right. until you step into it. And when you step into it, he just starts giving you, he starts giving, he starts opening that door. I can tell you stories about what happened in this church. That we were waiting, and we were waiting, and we were waiting until we just said, look, we're just going to do it. We stepped into it, and it was like the bell opened up. Like his provision was there, everything that we needed to get it done was already there. Was he was just waiting for somebody to step into it. He's waiting for you and I, as his children, to step into what he has called us to do. Invite somebody out. Going back to the salvation. Have you asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart to be your Lord and Savior? Like I said, I believe most people, most people have. I just want to make sure. I wanted to make sure in case there was a question in your heart. Because listen, your eternity depends on it. Your, your eternity depends on it. To you close your mind and bow your hands? Lord Jesus, we praise you and we thank you, Father, for this day, Lord. I pray, Father, for my brothers and sisters here, Lord. I pray, Father God, I know that this word that you bless me with, I know it won't come back more void, but it will accomplish what you set it forth to do. You've begun to even work in our hearts and you want to continue until that day. But Lord God, that foundation has to be secure. That foundation has to be centered on you and you alone. And Father God, I pray for my brothers and sisters here today, Lord. That Father God, that as they, as they listen to this message, that those who are on the internet listen to this message, Father God, if they don't know you, that they would make that commitment to you. That not, not just a, not just a, a, a get out of jail free. I'm talking about a heartfelt commitment to you, Lord. Because if they got to that point, Lord, I know you're dealing with their heart. 
And I pray that you would bless them, keep them, strengthen them, Lord God, in their walk with you, Lord, because it takes perseverance. I pray, Father God, that you would do the continue the work that you have begun in them. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> The altar is open. We want to have prayer with you. But there's also cake downstairs, right? Yeah, yeah. there's cake downstairs. Yeah, there, we're having cake downstairs. So you bring your sweet tooth with you, take your powder, and you Praise God. Praise God. Hey, God bless you guys. God bless you. Those, those of you who are going, traveling mercies upon you. And it was a blessing. Amen. Amen. Amen.